Welcome to Gospel of Deliverance. I'm Pastor Steve Williams. I want to thank you for joining me today. And I pray that you are enlightened and blessed with today's sermon as I have been. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for your beautiful word. And truly, Lord God, the message that it brings to us and what we must be about as your children. Let us truly reflect your character in this word in our lives, we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Praise God, repairers of the breaches. That's our subject for today, repairers of the breaches. We're going to begin in 2 Kings chapter 12, verses 4 and 5. 2 Kings chapter 12, verses 4 and 5. And Jehoash said to the priests, All the money of the dedicated things that is brought into the house of the Lord, even the money of every one that passeth the account, the money that every man is set at, and all the money that cometh into any man's heart to bring into the house of the Lord, let the priests take it to them, every man of his acquaintance, and let them repair the breaches of the house wheresoever any breach shall be found. So, whatever a person can bring, whatever God laid upon their heart, they were to bring to the house of God to repair the damages, the wear and tear, if you will, to the temple of the Lord. We pick up the account now in 2 Chronicles chapter 24, verses 7 through 13. Again, that's 2 Chronicles 24, 7 through 13. For the sons of Athaliah, that wicked woman, had broken up the house of God, and also all the dedicated things of the house of the Lord did they bestow upon Balaam. And at the king's commandment they made a chest and set it without at the gate of the house of the Lord. And they made a proclamation through Judah and Jerusalem to bring in to the Lord the collection that Moses, the servant of God, laid upon Israel in the wilderness. And all the princes and all the people rejoiced and brought in and cast into the chest until they had made an end. Now it came to pass that at what time the chest was brought unto the king's office by the hand of the Levites, and when they saw that there was much money, the king's scribe and the high priest's officer came and emptied the chest and took it and carried it to his place again. Thus they did day by day and gathered money in abundance. And the king and Jehoiada gave it to such as did the work of the service of the house of the Lord and hired masons and carpenters to repair the house of the Lord and also such as wrought iron and brass to mend the house of the Lord. So the workmen wrought, and the work was perfected by them, and they set the house of God in his state and strengthened it. Oh, hallelujah. They worked. They worked hard. They worked hard at gathering money, and the people worked hard at producing monies, whatever they could do to bring to the house of God. Would to God Almighty that we were all repairers of the breaches, spending our time attending to the scrapes and the harms and the fissures that we find in the temple of God, which we are. That's who we are. Do we sincerely authenticate the breaches in our own temple of the Lord, which resides in our spirit? And once the cracks and wear and those tears are verified, do we set about to collect the spiritual currency to effect the repairs? After we have prayed, do we begin immediately to the work of repairing the breaches in the house of God? We must take the tasks of inspector and workman and never be satisfied with anything less than a beautiful, respectful temple of the Holy Ghost. That's what we have to do, friends. 
we've got to work hard at making sure that the temple of the Lord is in pristine shape. We do not want a temple of the Lord. And again, when I speak of the temple, I'm talking about you and me, our spirits, the spirit that God has set up in us. We must keep that temple in beautiful condition. We must bring it up to code, if you will, spiritual code. We don't want any cracks. We want everything to be in tip-top shape because the Holy Ghost dwells there. The Holy Ghost abides in us day and night and we can allow nothing, no breaches. Therefore, we must truly be repairers of the breaches. We must be repairers of the temple of the Holy Ghost. We have to spend time every day making sure that every mar, every scrape, every scratch that has been taken during the battles and during simply daily life, we must repair the, the damage. We must repair the damage done to the temple of the Holy Ghost. We cannot allow anything to stand. So see, our relationship with Jesus and our life as a believer is not just going to church. It's not just in prayer. It's not just studying the Word, but it's about spiritual duty, spiritual responsibility to take care of this temple to make sure that we are taken care of, to make sure that where the Holy Ghost resides is in beautiful shape. That's our responsibility as repairers of the breaches. And of course, we can extrapolate further and we can understand that we are not only to repair the temple of God in us, but then as saints of the Lord Most High, we are to, as a church, make sure that the church itself is mended. And I'm not talking about the physical building. I'm talking about the church herself. That is what we do. That is our life. So you can see we have got to be busy for God. No lazy Christians are there because we must be about the Father's business and really, if we will do it upright, it will keep us busy every day of our lives. By the time we get done taking care of our family duties, making the money that brings in uh, our foods, takes care of our utilities and anything else that we might need, we can look and see that God has kept us busy in prayer, Bible study, and in repairing the breaches of our own personal temple of the Holy Spirit and then the very church herself to make sure that we are doing everything that He has told us to do. Hallelujah. After this hymn by Nathan Cornell, we will continue our study of repairers of the breaches. soul, are you weary and troubled? No light in the darkness you see. There's light for a look at the Savior, and life more abundant and free. Yeah. 
will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. His word shall not fail you, he promised. Believe him, and all will. to tell Turn your eyes upon Jesus Look forth in His wonderful face And the things of earth will grow strange of His glory and grace. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of His glory and grace. Our next scripture is 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. That's 1 Corinthians 6, 19. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? You see, this work that we do for the temple of the Holy Spirit is no small thing. And it is not limited to our own temple, but as I said before, prepares us and strengthens us for the larger job of repairing the church and bringing in the sheaves to the kingdom of God. Let's next read in Isaiah 58, 12. That's Isaiah 58 and 12. And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. Oh, hallelujah. Glory be to the Most High God, because... We've just been told who we are. We're the repairer of the breach. Repairer of the breach. What a title. What a job description we have, friends, that we are blessed to be the repairer of the breach, both for ourselves, others, and the church. We can rest assured that God has for us something to do every single day. Nay, every single hour of every single day, we have something to do for the Most High. We don't have to stand around twiddling our thumbs and doing nothing, thinking, what is there for me to do? All I do is pick up the lap robes. All I do is pick up the fans. All I do is straighten the chairs. Maybe I pick up the trash and take it to the dumpster. Maybe I drive the bus. Maybe I teach that one little Sunday school class. Friends, it doesn't matter what we do. From pastor to board member to that person, that simply shakes hands with those that enter into the house of God, what matters is that we are a repairer of the breach. That is who we are. That is what we do. We have something important to do besides the 
duty of our office. We are a repairer of the breach. Every, every scratch in every nook and cranny, every crack that has come into being. Within our own temple of the Lord, all the way through to that of the church, we are repairers of the breaches. This is our calling. This is what God has for us. We are to be about the business of taking care of the house of God. Not just worrying about our own finances, our own health, and the health of our loved ones. And I know it can be difficult sometimes dealing with all that goes on with friends and family, with our jobs, but oh, we've got something vastly more important than all of those responsibilities. The responsibility of making sure that this temple is in A1 shape, making sure that the Church of Christ Jesus is in pristine shape, that her condition looks beautiful, that she is the bride of Christ and does not look haggard in any way. The repairers of the breaches, that's our job from pastor to the laity. We are to be about repairing every single scratch, every single mar. Friends, from the smallest damage to the worst cracks in the foundation, we are to be making sure that the temple of God is in her best shape. Oh, I don't know about you, but it excites me to know that I've got something to do. Something beyond this sermon. Something beyond any singing that I might do for the glory of God. Any prayers I might pray for my wife and for my son and for my uh, uncle and my aunt. For all of those that I'm acquainted with. For Russ Miller and Joel Moody and so many more. For my cousins for those that are in my own congregation, for Chris and Jackie and Patrick, Sister Karen in Michigan, all of those prayers, all that God gives to me to relay to them, that is but a portion of what God has called me to. He's called me to be a repairer of the breaches, and He has called you to. Maybe you're giving toward it, collecting that spiritual money to make sure that you've got what it takes to repair the breaches of the house of God. That's what we're here for. See, we're not here just to receive the blessings of Jehovah. We're not just here to feel His peace. We're not just here to pray. We're here to make sure that the temple of the Holy Ghost is always in its very best condition. Will you join me in pledging as you've never done before to be a repairer of the breaches, to set about new work that is not just about us, but it's about the temple of God inside of us, the temple of God, as the church. Oh, let us be about His business, collecting that currency, and then proceeding to do the work. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I don't know about you, but I feel like taking a couple of laps around the church just to give God praise for all the walls that he's breaking down in the natural and setting up the spiritual temple. Thank you, Lord. Reverend Rick Cornell has some words of wisdom for us, and then we will return to today's message, Repairers of the Breaches.
The lighthouse stood way out on the point that many called Dead Man's Point, so named because of the lives lost there before the lighthouse was built. Since the lighthouse had begun operation, not a single life was lost. Many began calling it Guardian Angel because of the lives that were being spared. It seemed that on stormy nights, the the current, plus the fact that rocks protruded farther than the captains imagined, made for very treacherous navigation, and without Guardian Angel Lighthouse, much damage would occur. Now, years later, it seemed that many of the lighthouses are needed. I suppose most of the boats and ships have radar and radios and all that sophisticated navigational equipment, GPSs and so forth. Many people are fighting to keep the lighthouses in place because of what they stand for. They stand for a light on a dark night. Many times we have navigated our lives into very treacherous waters with disaster lurking in the darkness. But just at the right time, the light shone down upon us and we saw the dangers and avoided calamity. The Bible says there is a way that seems right to man, but the end thereof is destruction. Many have followed that way and they need a light to shine forth in that dark night, that dark night that they're living in. That light is you. Jesus spoke to his followers and said, you are the light of the world. So let your light shine that others might see. There are many that say that type of light isn't needed anymore in these modern times, but I disagree. There are more and more people crashing on the rocks of life than ever before. Christians, let your light shine forth in these stormy times. People are looking for a guiding light to help them in their struggles. Plant yourself on the solid rock of Christ Jesus and let his light beacon forth so others may find their way. Again, I want to thank you for joining me today for this important message about repairing the breaches of the temple of God. It is our most important position as a Christian, repairing the breaches, to make sure that the temple of the Holy Ghost is in her best condition, her best shape. Because If we can't make sure that the temple inside of us and the very church of God is in great shape, then how can we continue on? How can we hold the spiritual blessings that God bestows upon us? If we do not take care of the breaches that are already there, then the next breach compounds the circumstance and then the next breach unattended causes a fissure and then the fissure grows and before you know it it's from ceiling to floor we can see how important it is to make sure that we repair the breaches and let us not wait for damage to pile on before we begin the repairs but as good stewards Let us see one scratch and repair it. Let us get to that business. Isaiah chapter 61 verse 4. Isaiah 61 and verse 4. 
and they shall build the old wastes. They shall raise up the former desolations, and they shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. They shall do it, my friends. That's us. We're going to build up the waste places first in ourselves. We're going to make sure that everything is fruitful. Every place anointed by God, every place He has had us step to, to walk through, that He has anointed in our lives for us personally and for the church of the Almighty God, we are the builders of those waste places and we take possession of it. We're possessing the land for the Most High. We are repairing the breaches for Jehovah Jireh. We are taking care of all the damage for ourselves and for the whole church of God. This is our job. Every pastor, every elder, every deacon, every prayer warrior, every person who throws a dime in the plate, every child that hears the Sunday school lesson, every young adult, every young married class, every single one of us, every board member. Oh, friends, every person in the kingdom of God is a repairer of the breaches. Every single one has a job to do beyond the office that God has placed us in. We are repairers of the breaches. Oh, hallelujah. Look no further as to how you fit into the kingdom of the Lord. Maybe you've been asking yourself that question, saying, what do I have to do? Look at me. I'm housebound. I really don't get out anymore. What else can I do? You see, we don't have to look any further for our Christian identity because this is our identity restores of wasted places. That's who you and I are. I'm speaking to friends in the Lord right now, brothers and sisters. You've been battling, especially over this last nearly two years since the COVID lockdown. And you've been concerned about your involvement. Maybe you've been attending service remotely as many do. Maybe you've just started going back into the sanctuary or maybe you've been attending straight through. But I want to tell you something. The identity that the Lord has for you goes far beyond being that church member. You are a repairer of the breach. You, my friend, are a restorer of wasted places. That's our job. This is who we are. We're not just Sunday go to meeting Christians. We are not just singers of hymns. We are not just prayer warriors. Oh, we could name so many more. Pastor, you're not just a pastor. Elder, you're not just the elder. You're not just a deacon. My friends, we are repairers of the breaches and God has anointed us for that purpose I said he's prepared us and anointed us he has been conducting services in us and I'm talking about training he has been training us for the purpose of restoring the wasted places he has been giving us in service if you will to prepare us for the workings of the Holy Ghost, to take that spiritual plaster and we'll put it on that trawl and we will, we will heal the breaches in those walls. We'll cover it up. 
we'll sand it down and paint it over. Oh, glory to God, we've got something to do for the Lord. Never complain, I don't have anything to do for God. I seem to have no position. No, all I do is come in and every now and then lift my hand. Sometimes I say, Amen. No, that is not who you are. You are a repairer of the breach. Whether you're dropping the money in or whether you're taking to the walls of the Lord, the walls of His church, and you in prayer are applying the substance of repair. The mortar, the bricks, the paste. Oh, friends, we've got so much to do. And then the finishing touches. We've got to get about the business of taking care of this temple and also the temple of God, the church herself. Let us repair and not break down. Let us not tear down but build up. Let us be lovers of the temple of God, repairers of the breaches. Let us concern ourselves with what God has called us to do. I don't believe there is, my friends, any more important job than to be a repairer of the breaches. Because we are always then attending to the house of God. Again, I'm not talking about the physical building, and that has to be done as well. We understand that. I'm talking about the church, the spiritual church. And I'm talking about the temple of the Holy Ghost in you and me. Let us be about the business of being a repairer of the breaches, the restorers of the wasted places. Let us be about that work. And we will, we will be fulfilled in our calling to God. And never a dull moment, never a time, where we can say, I don't have anything to do. I seem to be without a chore. Well, not anymore, since we understand that you and me, every single believer, is a repairer of the breaches. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, you know who we are. You know what you've called us to do, and you have equipped us to do it. Lord Jesus, I ask today that every single one of us, that we spend time praying for the anointing to build up that spiritual currency, the spiritual funds that we are prepared to finance these endeavors to restore the house of God to its former glory and keeping it that way. Lord God, let the temple of the Holy Spirit that's within us shine immaculately. Let it be raised up upon your firm foundation and let all of the cracks be repaired, Lord God. Let us set about and do that. And then for the church herself, let us all render help to the church, making sure that there are no fissures, no cracks, no scratches, no scrapes, no mars, nothing to be let go, but always be a repairer of the breach. Lord Jesus, give us that strength to go beyond what we've been doing and let us focus and concentrate upon repairing the breaches that are in our temple, that you have placed in our spirit, and that are in the church. God, we thank you for this strength. We give you honor and glory for it, and God, we ask that you truly anoint us for this purpose, 
that you heal us for this purpose. You heal us for this work. God, whatever is standing in our way, financial, mental, spiritual, physical, heal us for your purpose of doing your work in repairing the breaches. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, thank you for joining me today. I pray that you have a great day in Christ and in repairing the breaches. Goodbye and God bless.